All right, what I'm gonna do now is called weighing my load. And before, get your head out of the gutter. I'm talking about the freight, okay? We're gonna weigh my load, and then we're gonna do math. And then we'll see what happens. So I am 900 pounds over on my drive axle, but 240 pounds under gross weight. And what that means is that I have to get out of the truck and move something. My boat is the fifth wheel. Let's try it. Wondering what is even the point of trucking. Once you're done with that mental exercise, then you do this. Crocs, baby. That up there's the old fifth wheel and those notches like little teeth looking deals they call. I think, I think we call those notches. And uh, you get about 250 pounds roughly or more so or less from each one of those deals. And 900 pounds divided by 250 pounds is some kind of number that makes me believe that if I move that forward, say four of those notches, that I might take that 900 pounds from these here drive axles and move them up there to that steer axle to, uh, you know, make everything be all peachy and stuff. So before I can move that, I gotta take some weight off of it. So we gotta drop the old landing gear and I'll show you how to do that now. The first step to dropping your landing gear correctly is to um, put gloves on. So while you're doing that, I'll go ahead and just drop it down. Okay? Great. Huh. Another great way thing about dropping, the, if you can put one of your winches right in the way of your little crank there deal, that just adds some, you know, frustration to the project and a frustrated project is a fun project. So, um, I won't attempt to move this or fix the problem. I will just simply, uh, complain about it being in the way. It just seems better. Down, uh, problem has been identified. Solution lies within the cab. I'm going to go in there and clickety clack some buttons and doodads and we'll be good to go. Let's do it. First thing I'm going to do is um, launch a missile slash move the pins out. Did you hear that click out there? That means that it worked. That's really good news. Then I'm going to deflate the balloon. Nope, that's my inner axle lock. That's going to take all of the air away. It's gonna take the truck's breath away. Like when, um, like when women look at my hair, that kind of deal. Then, um, then what I'm gonna do, since I want that fifth wheel to go forward, the rest of the truck's gotta go in the old reverse. The old gear selector there and just, real truckers, that's how you shift. The red valve, the old trailer supply there, that's um, pulled to the outside. And then I push the yellow one there, the old parking brake, that's inside. And what that means is that uh, the truck can move, but the trailer can't. Are you with me? Let's go backwards. I'm back, let's go check our work. So I think what I'm gonna do is set those pins in and yank it forward and it should be right there at a solid four. Solid four, which is the rating that I gave um, the Revenant out of 10 or possibly 20. We don't need to get into that right now, but uh, let's give this a shot. Um, late, late at night, I dream about fifth wheel placement. What do you dream about? Something weird? What I need to do is kind of just clickety clack all this stuff in reverse, you know, the opposite of the way we did it to begin with. And then we should have Legal weight on the drive axles is the plan, and if not, then I'll just abandon this truck right here and then uh, start a different career. Maybe take you guys with me. We'll see what happens. The landing gear, we are now ready to take flight straight back to the Catscale. Let's go get on it and see if we move the old poundage the way that we needed to. We are now legal on the drive axles and 240 pounds to spare for gross weight. Bad news, my fuel level looks a lot like this. So now the trick is to 
get enough fuel to not run out of the fuel, uh, but not so much that I am now overweight. Now, uh, between the time that I reweighed this load until when I'm talking to you now, it's only been however long it takes to idle from the scale to a parking spot on the old ELD crawl. But in that time, I went ahead and had a minor mental breakdown, uh, cried a little bit, um, called home and asked if I could retire today. I can't. The monies are, you know, I got to keep making them. So I guess what I'm going to have to do is the thing that I absolutely abhor doing, which is math. So now I guess the question is, you know, uh, what, what's the question? How to be legal. So I'm 12, 240 on my drive, my, my steer axle now, cause I had to push that weight from my drives to my steer axle. Now what I need to do is revisit the old regulations and figure out what my maximum steer axle weight is going to be for the remainder of this trip. The states that I have to travel through are Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, North Dakota, and Minnesota. Do you got all those down? Let's look those up in the old Bible there, which is what I affectionately call the Rand McNally Motor Carriers Atlas. And that'll tell us where we're at. I'm gonna go over here to this weight and size limits table for my steering axle. And we'll go by state. The state that we're in now is Oregon. 600 pounds an inch of width, up to 20,000 pounds. Gosh, dang it, the answer requires doing more math. Oh boy. To determine the width of this tire, I could pull out the tape measure, but every time I pull out my tape measure, a bunch of old dudes come over and tell me that theirs is longer, and that's scary. Another way we can do it is by looking at the tire size. Tires are sized by aspect ratio anymore. And that's just a fancy way of saying that the first number will tell you how wide the tire is. This one's at 275.80 R22.5. Um, the first number of the tire size is the width of the tire in millimeters. God bless the USA. Am I right? Am I wrong? The metric system rules. But what you need to know, what I need to know, is that 275 millimeters is roughly 10 and something inches. So if we do our mouth off of 10, we're going to be just fine. So we have 600 pounds per inch width of tire. So 600 times 10 is 6,000 um, and times two is 12,000. So in Oregon, I'm only legal to 12,000. So I'm going to be over on my steers and that's the bad news. Let's move down the line, Washington, Idaho, Montana, North Dakota, and Minnesota and see where we're at. Washington, exactly the same. Idaho, 20,000 pounds. Thank goodness for Idaho. Too bad I'm only there for 80 miles of the trip bummer. Montana should not exceed tire manufacturer rating. Load single 33,250 kilograms or 71, 7,160 pounds for us gosh darn Americans. 71 times 2 is let's just say 7. That's so I'm actually good to 14,000 um, if you add both of those. So not too shabby. 320 if you want to get technical, but I don't want to get technical. I want to keep it simple, okay? So no need to correct me, but I know that you will. And that's fine. Anna, I'm free and clear, buddy. Now let's move on to old, what's the next one? North Dakota. North Dakota is 550 pounds an inch, and that is totally depressing. Minnesota back to 600 pounds an inch. All that being said, I'm in some little bit of risky business in a few of these states on my steer axle being over roughly 12,000 pounds. However, all of these states that I'm going through recognize an APU exemption, exemption that we get that can be applied for um, having an APU installed on the truck, which I do. Now, there are some intricacies state to state about how that's enforced and how um, you can use that. However, I'm going to lean hard on that right now. I have 440 pounds in all of the states that I'm going through, with the exception of Minnesota, where I have 550 pounds. All that being said, I should have some wiggle room on my steer weights 
even though I will definitely be a little bit over the 12 mark that I need to stay at, even though I might be a little bit over the mark for some of these states where they're less lenient on steering axle weight, that APU exemption should help me out. Um, if you guys know the intricacies of these specific states, I found a really cool uh, resource table put together by a company that gives you the basic outline state to state for the APU exemption. Um, I'll show that in this video and you can check it out. Uh, it might help you in a situation if you need them. But um, I'm actually gonna be fine for the purposes of being legal on my steering axle. Um, my biggest concern now is my gross weight. I'm only 240 pounds under gross. And now what I have to do is some math to make sure that I stay under gross, under 80,000 pounds, or calculate the distance to my next static scale on the road enforcement I have no control over, but I will go by my static scales and um, try to measure it to where I burn it off down to 80,000 pounds by the time I get there. Uh, like I said, I do not have very much fuel. A uh, good question that you might be asking is, Jesse, why didn't you fill up before you went and got loaded? And the answer to that is actually really simple. I'm stupid. So um, now you know, but we're in the situation that we're in. So now what I've got to do is take that 240 pounds. Uh, I think I might be messing up the numbers. Let's revisit the scale ticket, shall we? 260 pounds under gross after looking at it again. Um, here's the thing. Diesel fuel weighs seven pounds a gallon, give or take. Anywhere from 6.9 to a, up to about 7.6 pounds per gallon depending on something called specific gravity. We don't need to get into that, but you'll be pretty accurate if you base your mathematics on seven pounds per gallon. So seven pounds a gallon, I have 260 pounds to go. 260 divided by seven is a number that I'm about to tell you now once I clickety-clack in the calculator. A little over 37 gallons that I can get and be right at 80,000 pounds. That's not gonna get me very far. I'm literally riding like an eighth of a tank, so. Um, what I'm going to do now is look up what my next way station is that is likely to be open. This is halfway outlaw stuff that I'm t teaching you right now or attempting to show you. I don't know if I'm teaching anybody anything, but I'm walking you through my thought process. Um, let's see how far that scale is. Next way station that I have to seriously worry about is the port of entry at I-82 in Washington at Plymouth. So it's 182 miles away. Um, these trucks get roughly, this makes for easy math. Our trucks get roughly seven miles per gallon. Um, sometimes a little bit lower than that, sometimes more than that. But you get pretty close if you do your math off of seven miles per gallon. There's um, a gallon weighs seven pounds. So if you divide the two, that's one. That means that one pound per mile you burn off. So what that means is I got to take that additional 182 miles and I've got to divide that by seven. And that'll tell me how many additional gallons I can put on to where I should hopefully be right back down to exactly legal weight when I cross that scale at Plymouth. You ready for that math? It's 182 divided by seven. And I'm gonna do that now, not in my head, because again, I'm stupid and I need a calculator to help me. It's 26 gallons that I can get, um, which will put me over. It definite, definitely will put me over by 182 pounds over gross, but hopefully I can burn that off at that weigh station, which brings my total amount of gallons that I can buy right now up to 63 gallons. Did any of that make sense? Doesn't matter. We're doing it anyways. I'm gonna go put 63 gallons of fuel in the truck and then we're gonna reweigh again. And if my clickety clack math is correct, that means that we should weigh 80,182 pounds. But the cat scale goes by increments of 20. So what that means is that I should either weigh 80,180 pounds or 80,200 pounds. And if I don't weigh either of those two numbers, then everything has gone horribly awry and I will go back to my original solution, which was to abandon this truck here and find a different career path. So let's get started. I'm gonna stop this at 63 gallons. 63.514 so I added an additional 
uh, 3.6 pounds to the deal. But still, same thing. We're gonna reweigh. We should be 180,000 pounds, either 180 or 200 pounds. So either 80,120 pounds or 80,200 pounds. Nope, said that wrong again. 80,180 pounds or 80,200 pounds. Let's go check. It's 80,200 pounds. Just like the calculator said it would be. Um, I guess I'm fine now. You want to see some other more cool math stuff that you can determine from these last two scale tickets? I'll show you. It'll be neat. So my gross weight increased by 460 pounds. Five, the weight on my drives increased by 220 pounds. And the weight on my steers increased by 240 pounds. So if you run those percentages, a total of 460 pounds, and then 240, 220. Percentage, that's a roughly 52% of the fuel weight going to my steer axle, and 48%, it's not close, there's decimals and stuff, but I'm just simplifying. 52 to my steers, and then 48 to my drives. Now what you can do with that is if you ever find yourself in a precarious situation where you're tied up on a limit, either a gross limit or your axle limits, you'll know which percentage of your fuel is going to which axle. It varies on every truck, depending on wheelbase, the placement of the fuel tanks, etc. cetera. Um, but it's a fun thing to calculate when you get a chance, just so you can get a little bit more precise about fueling up to limits if you need to. But, or you could just wing it. Um, just winging it is a little bit less time consuming, but potentially less fun at the weigh station. Doing the math is way more time consuming and still not that much fun going through the weigh station. So the game, just wing it. I don't know why I did all that. Let's drive. I'm trying to go home and not get an overweight ticket. This video is over. If you learned something, please let me know in the comments. If you thought this was terrible, also let me know. If you want to teach me something, a thing or two about trucking from your 4 million miles and everything, also do that. I'd love to hear from you. This video was as exhausting to make as it was to watch. So. Let's go home. Let's stop on the scale and make videos. Just keep her moving. People are trying to weigh behind you. Don't sit here on the scale, hogging up the space, trying to make some point about percentages and math. It's rude. Thank you.